come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where the movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, hey, wherever you found us, please do us a favor. Go give us a like, a star rating, or a review. If you review us. We'll even read your review later on our show during Igor's mailbag. But all of this stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like yourself. So uh, why don't you why don't you go do that for us? So you're listening to the Internet <laughs> Radio you? Superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Uh, Colin. Colin. Colin, Colin. Colin. <laughs> Sean. Colin. Sean. Colin. Somebody thought your name was John. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's understandable. <laughs> I get that. I, Sean. I have been John. known to call you Jonathan. So. Well, that's yeah. fine, though. That is the uh, long version of my name, yes. and that is perfectly accurate. Yeah. Uh, Colin, what do we watch tonight? Tonight we watch the movie called The Fun House. Directed by Toby Hooper. Starring 1980s Michaela. Apparently, <laughs> that's right. yeah. What's that's her right. name? Elizabeth Barrage or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Uh, Which Holly, you were right. It was striking <laughs> yes. resemblance. It's true. Yeah, yeah listener, Barrage. if you ever want to know what Michaela looked like, <laughs> she looks like her, basically. She does. It's true. This uh, movie comes to us from the year 1981. Ah, a fine year, I guess. I don't know. Was it <laughs> like a fine? I don't know. Year? Well, we're I in think the middle of the sweet spot. Oh yeah, of, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of the the like the 80s. "Quote unquote slashers," even though this is not in no, there. This no, is not a slasher not a movie, slasher. not at all. Uh, but it uh, is in that sweet spot of. I think a lot movies. of people think this is a slasher movie. No. I think they're well, wrong. Why, why would they wrong. think that? Like, I get, I get why on the surface you would think that. On the surface, but, sure, yeah. but this is not a. This slasher is Toby movie. Hooper, the director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, it's coming indeed. out in the middle of slasher movie. Uh, right, Eighty-one, eighty-two. Yeah. This is also what I like to think of this as the second golden age of universal horror. Okay. Uh, 1981. Is that just by the inclusion of a Frankenstein monster in this movie? Yeah. Well, we got to get into that, okay. right? Because yeah. there, there is a lot of. Oh, that's uh, how they were able to do that. I oh, gotcha. You go. I gotcha. Right, right, yep. right. I thought about that. I was like, how are they doing this? But now I get it. Okay. Yeah. Wait, can you just put Frankenstein? A mask in a movie without no. universals no, that they, they, you cannot. have to have they their specific approval. The green, the Boris Karloff, right. makeup. and that's why the room was decked out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. thinking about it, like, I gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's like posters we have the opportunity. Of Frankenstein and the Everywhere. Wolfman and all yeah. over the Makes place. Sense. Makes okay. sense. Yep, I follow you. Um, but Universal did uh, in '81. I know they released uh, the Funhouse and Halloween two. In 82, they really went all in on the fantasy horror stuff with movies like Cat People and Conan, The Barbarian, E.T., and The Thing. You know, it was like, boom, we're going. We're going all in on this. Yep. The thing that started with Star Wars and the special effects there and the American Werewolf in London and howling movies and bladder effects and all this stuff and the gore of the Friday the 13th movies. And so, yeah, they just kind of took that technology and said, we're going to we used to do it. You know, we're the house of Universal House of Horrors. Yeah. We're going to do it again. Um, So this film. Yeah. Toby Hooper. What do we know about this guy? What do we know about him? Or what do we know him from? Has anyone here seen uh, Eaten Alive? No. 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 I've always wanted to. You know, I can't always have two. I've never seen it. This is a. What is this? This is the movie that he did between the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Salem's Lot. Okay. So Toby Hooper, he made a movie called Eggshells. Anyone? Nope. I've heard of it. <laughs> Anyone? I think because you've mentioned Eggshells. it before. I think that was his first movie, right? right? Out of college, did this movie Eggshells. Second movie was called, I think, Head Cheese, which was re later retitled The Texas Chainsaw right. exactly. Massacre. Mm -hmm. You have okay. to say it that way. It's not Chainsaw. It's Chainsaw Massacre. We go by the John Larroquette uh, <laughs> uh, uh, pronunciation well of, i think on the title it's broken up into two chains words. Uh, well, yeah texas if nothing else chain it's the texas saw. chainsaw massacre yeah <laughs> so it's that there's that division in there yeah. i'll go with that well it was 74 and i'm not sure what year eaten alive takes place but i know it has marilyn burns in it mm -hmm. who's the star of uh, texas chainsaw mm -hmm. and it has neville brand and it's like he runs a gator farm or something he's got a giant cock crocodile and he feeds 
tourists to it or something. I, I don't yeah, know. Sounds the trailer great. is really intense. Sounds like, the great. trailer, yeah. like it, look, the trailer kind of gives you that same feeling of like roar of like these people are getting way too close. Roar. Sort of like, real animals. Yeah. 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 Mm. Ooh, I like it. I mean, there's some that are obviously puppets, but there's a couple shots where you're like, oh, that looks really uncomfortable. Ooh, like, I even <laughs> like the, the, the sentence, some are obviously puppets. Yeah. Like that drawing <laughs> in this yeah. movie. I'm just like, ooh, really? I, I feel yeah. like that the trailer is just like a montage of gators like busting through wood. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. constantly. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm in. I know nothing about this. Yeah. I'm looking everything up about it now. What's yeah, it called? Eaten Eaten alive. alive. Eaten Alive. All right. That is... Uh, yeah. On the list, just based on the description here tonight. Yeah, yeah, that sounds you know, amazing. I, I can't believe great. I've never seen this at this late in yeah, my life. This seems like something seen. you would have been like. Nah, I'm gonna well, try I haven't it. seen every Toby Hooper movie because, to be honest, I've never been like. I mean, no, like, I don't blame you. Who were the big? Uh, <laughs> we're like all the, turned off by part two. Of I Texas mean, Chainsaw yeah. Master let's be real. Like, yeah. Okay, let's, a lot listen, of people right now are saying yeah. like, "What kind of yeah. heresy is this?" Listen Go back and listen to that episode. Listen to that episode. You might get angry, but that's fine. I don't give a shit. We did not like the Texas Chainsaw uh-uh. Massacre Part Two, and we, we would not. do it with an open heart. Like we were, I, did. Yeah. we were ready I to didn't embrace remember it. Remember anything? Yeah. And I was just like, I'm, "Let's do it." I'm all for I it. I had never seen it before, what, so I was like, right, "Bring exactly. it!" Yeah. What can you give us? And we all came out just like, "No." Yeah, big yeah. no. That's a big no. Well, he also did classics like Invaders from Mars. Never nope. seen it. Okay, that's uh, not a good movie. I really like Life Force, but a lot of people yeah. don't. But uh, I, 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 like Life I Force. think it's enjoyable and watchable. But I don't know if I'd say it's a good movie. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. It's, it's watchable for I sure. Need to watch it again. It's especially a bit with, of a uh, spectacle. Like, yeah, it's a spe- it's yeah. Just a big movie. It really yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, especially with this uh, this Blood Machines coming out soon, which gave me like really big Life Force vibes. Really? Yeah, it did. I always get Life Force vibes. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, you're, like, you're looking for it. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Like but the it, mummy. It, like, you get really, Life Force vibes. Really gave me Life Force vibes. I'm like, okay, kind of want to watch Life Force right now. Yeah. It's a good movie. You should check that out. Life Force. We also did an episode on that. You can go back and listen to it. Very true. Um, but his early career, right? Because you're like, you're establishing yourself as a filmmaker going like, boom, I made this movie that all of a sudden became like this huge um, pop culture or cultural phenomenon, mm. you know, based on, I suppose, the title alone, The yes. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then it's like, so, okay, so what do you do next? Poltergeist. Well, you didn't see this is where we got to well, go with the Stepstones. How yeah. do we get to Poltergeist? Because yeah. yeah. that's like basically the movie that both made and broke Toby Hooper. It did. Um, that big studio Steven Spielberg produced. You know, I mean, that's you can't <laughs> Steven, really go higher Steven than Spielberg that. Spielberg produced slash directed. directed yeah. 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 As the rumors say. Mm, as as rumors certain say. people on the set have said, but yes. contradicted by other people on the <laughs> set. Yep. It sure does feel like a Steven Spielberg movie. Yeah, it doesn't does. it though? Sure doesn't does. it? It doesn't feel like a Toby Hooper movie at all. <laughs> what does a Toby Hooper movie feel like? Gritty. Unpolished. <laughs> <laughs> Greasy. They're pretty Grimy. rough around the edges. Yeah. <laughs> but see, like Life Force and Invaders from Mars do have a polish to them. And like, what the fuck? Like after that, it seems like it's... Uh, did he do spontaneous combustion? Is that a Toby Hooper movie? I mean, uh, eventually you've got movies like The Mangler, mm. right? And uh, in the 2000s, The Toolbox Murders. Right. I have yep. seen that. I don't remember much about it. But yeah, I, didn't, I didn't care for it. I seem to remember. But. I don't know that Ho- that Hooper has, like, uh, and obviously he did Masters of Horror stuff and all mm-hmm. that, but, I mean, he became a figurehead for, you know... I mean, I suppose if you make the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you get a lot of gas out of that. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. forgiven for a lot of stuff. <laughs> he well, should have just hit up the convention circuit and just, just wrote, I think, it. <laughs> wrote it, wrote that <laughs> way. <if> you had. <laughs> I think he was a really shy guy from all the, uh, you know, he really didn't like uh, public life and all this other stuff. And He did uh, do spontaneous combustion. With Brad Dorif, if, if I remember. Yeah. 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 But I mean, like what between, uh, I mean, like in the 80s. So, I mean, basically he had Poltergeist and then Canon Films hired him for the three picture deal was like, we want Texas Chainsaw 2, Toby. We'll give you Life Force and Invaders from Mars. And when both of those tanked, and I think Texas Chainsaw did okay, uh, then it was like cast off into oblivion. Cast off into TV. What do you do? Amazing stories. Okay, Spielberg. So so Spielberg's throwing him a bone. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Equalizer. Freddy's Nightmares. Ooh. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> then we get into the 90s with Spontaneous Combustion. That's 1990. Uh, a TV movie called I'm Dangerous Tonight. Oh, I think I've seen it with uh, yeah, my girlfriend from Sleepwalkers. Match Dynamic, yeah. Yep. Indeed. 
Uh, Haunted Lives, True Ghost Stories, one episode, Tales from the Crypt. We get to 1993, he did Night Terrors. Isn't that also a TV movie? I think so. Yeah. Uh, he did Body Bags, TV right, movie. Right, an episode of the John Carpenter thing, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, The Mangler, 1995. Mm-hmm. I still haven't seen it. Nowhere Man. Robert England. The Mangler, Stephen King story. Yeah. Uh, Dark Skies, one episode, like TV, TV, TV. TV jail TV, for a long TV, time, TV. huh? Crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> in 2000 oh my god he, Sci- went the, for sci-fi? He, went, he went into the 2000s with Crocodile I don't think sci-fi was sci-fi at that time no it was actually sci-fi sci-fi yeah um, so he did Crocodile which I remember that poster yeah ooh Night Vit TV TV Toolbox Murders in 2004 Mortuary in 2005 right yeah, mor- yeah. Mortuary and then uh, Masters of Horror. Do you remember recently when he got uh, a gig to go to, like, was it Dubai? They wanted to make a movie about the gin. The gin, the gin oh, 2013. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it wasn't his like, last credit, right? Yeah. I think yeah. so. And it was, I don't think yes. it was ever properly released because, I mean, so it's unfortunate, I guess, what happened to Toby Hooper, or is it? I don't know. It seemed like he had here. Depends how he feels. The, there's the Texas Chainsaw to Eaten Alive. To uh, Stephen King adaptation, Salem's Lot, which is a really good uh, movie. And then after that, it was to Hollywood, Universal Pictures, and The Fun House yep. before graduating to Poltergeist and then Canon Films. And you know, we just told you what happened what to him not? after that. Yes. Um, so The Fun House, right? I don't know how this came about. So I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask. But what do we got here in this movie is like this really strange structure of a movie right would you say i would say structure is a generous word i think as you're i think as you're going through it it feels like an odd structure i think at the end of it like it all i think it all works and comes together i would say Hmm. as you're as as i'm as i'm going through it i'm just it, it feels like Dare I say the movie is like going through a funhouse? Like you, you don't know. <laughs> don't, you don't give know it that much credit. Well, you, you don't know what's going on, and it's, you know it's a little like where, where where are we going? What's going on? What are these things going on? But when you get to the end of it, you're just like okay, like it, it feels like it all is of one thing, or at least it felt to me. I mean, okay. it, it feels like it ends. Yeah, if that's what you're going with, yeah. it feels all like right. uh, it was all of one piece. Like nothing felt uh, uh, out of step with the rest of what was going on. I feel like we watch different movies in time. Yeah, right. I, 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 I really want to hear how you back up these claims okay. going forward. All right, well, I'm going to yeah. put forward a thesis uh, that I'm going to say this movie has three parts to it. We're not saying three acts, but there are three right. sections. Which may not be associated with each other. Right. So section number one mm-hmm. is the cold open, yes. right? Which we're going to have to talk about, like, what's going on there. Yes. Then... Uh, then section two is the 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 carnival, mm-hmm. and section three is the fun house. And there might be a third, a fourth section. The fourth section might, might be, be uh, the brothers storyline, <laughs> right? It right. might be that might be its own section because I'm not sure how it fits into the other three. Right? You'll have to help me out on this. Maybe it does. Maybe it connects in some way. Okay. So the opening of this movie, the, section number one, mm. is um. This is the homage section, or it's like the bringing, uh, at this point, 1981, he is bringing his love, Hooper is bringing his love of classic horror movies and like wedding them to the 1980s, the modern day aesthetic. Yeah. And what do I mean by that? There's a lot of like, I mean, they're playing on Psycho, the shower scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of iconography from uh, old 30s monster movies Mm -hmm. and ultimately and ultimately Halloween Halloween Mm -hmm. where they would you consider this a ripoff or an homage it's I uh Homage. I was, I think he's, no, how I much think time he, has to pass before it's an homage? I don't know. I think he knows what he's doing. I, would, I, I think he specifically yeah. knows what he's doing I would when say he puts on that. Since it's so... It, he's not hiding it. I think it makes it an homage. No, he knows people are going to see that yeah. and know what they're going to think If he's trying about. to mask it and make it look like his own, I right, would say ripping it off. Rip-offs but, are also aware of what they're ripping off, though. Sure. They're not just like... You know, they're doing it because it's a famous but thing. I think, well, I think lesser known people rip off. I think the more known people homage. And Yeah, I, and I would say Toby Hooper's movie is lesser known than Halloween well, in this instance. But Toby yeah. Hooper in him, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. What, what is the, uh, how, how, do, do, 
how do people know Toby Hooper in 1981? Or I think he's the director of the Texas Chainsaw right, Massacre. Right, I think so. And, and I possibly think, I think he knows a lot at that point. I think it's homage. I think he's famous enough to this. Oh, I don't think so. I think, like, did any, did it, I mean, I don't know what the box office is in this movie. Did anyone go see this? Was this yeah. a successful yeah, movie? Yeah, I mean, I think it did okay. It was like a modest, you know, mm-hmm. uh, success. Um the I guess you know if we're saying okay so basically the the there's a scene so there's a, a girl gets into a shower the scene is shot almost specifically like the psycho shower scene yeah I mean there's a lot of very similar shots sure um then we see a a room that's all decorated with all this universal monster stuff. And a black gloved hand grabs a knife off the wall and then puts on a mask. And so we have the, this is all point of view, steady cam going down halls and the Halloween eye uh, shadows, yes. you know, whatever, eye holes uh, come over the camera lens and the, 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 the quote unquote killer goes into the bathroom, psycho shower moment. Only it turns out that this is uh, this little uh, brother of the main girl. Uh, who's got a fee it's a fake plastic knife right but if we're saying that the halloween uh thing is a ripoff then also the psycho thing is a ripoff so it's like oh, for sure right because i mean time between them notwithstanding it's like i think he's trying to make he's wedding uh psycho with halloween by way of like the universal monsters i know this is a lot to like this is heady shit for me to be thrown out. <laughs> that at the beginning of the Funhouse, you have this kind of Toby Hooper's uh, right. horror cosmology in a scene that feels to me like they shot the rest of the movie, and then they're like, "We only got like an hour here, Toby. You need to so pad we, this out." So they did this. And so they did this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know what I've always wanted to do. Yeah, I like these things. And let's hey, we're this. at we're at Universal, and we've man. got the Universal money. Yeah, let's sh- let's do it. If they're gonna let me do it, let's we've do got, it. We've got the rights to all this stuff, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that sounds like a groovy idea. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Just sucking on trying, trying to do. Yeah, it's trying like, to do. Uh, Toby yeah, yeah, all right, man, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> that's good. That's a good idea, man. I like it. That's yeah. his producer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's him. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was what Zelda Rubenstein said about uh, Toby uh, Hooper yeah. on the set of uh, Poltergeist. She said that he allowed a lot of controlled substances on his sure. set, and he was not in control of the Poltergeist production. Mm. This is all hearsay. He's credited with directing Poltergeist. Um, so you got that segment, right? Yeah. And then we introduced to our lead girl, whose name I'm not even Amy. sure. Amy. Mm-hmm. Played by the junior Michaela. <laughs> Elizabeth. Amy. Breckenridge, Bre- 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 yeah. Bert. Is her name not? It's her name. Maybe Amy Burridge? in real life. Burridge. 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 Thank you, Elizabeth Burridge. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so she's going on a date with Buzz. 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 Yes. Yeah. From right? the from the filling station. Yes. Buzz is played by Cooper Huckabee, who we will all know is one of the Brittle Brothers from Django Unchained. Yep. Okay, he's done a bunch of other stuff too, like Jag or something. I don't know what. Who hasn't done Jag? Yeah, the show was on for like what, like thirteen years or something. He might like have that? been Jag. No, yeah. that's not. <laughs> there, no uh, there might be Sean. Did you watch Jag? I have watched all of Jag. It's how, on my network. How old are you? Uh, no, I have to. I was forced by my work to watch. All right, Jag. I had I mean, no idea you, you were seventy-two years old. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> wow. All right, so this leads us into basically the whole. Uh, you know, this is that usual um, uh, 80s movie staple where you got the kids. In this case, there's four of them. Mm. There's Buzz and Amy, and they pick up their friends. Uh, Liz. And Richie. Richie. Yep. And they're all going to go to the carnival because the carnival is in town. Yeah, it is. This yeah. is what state does this movie take place Ohio. in? Ohio. Yeah? Yeah. Positive? Something Rapids, Ohio. Okay. It feels, it Iowa. They say it. Or Iowa. It Cedar, Ra- Iowa. It's Cedar it's Rapids. Iowa. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Iowa. All right. It's very there Midwestern. It yeah. Cedar Rapids. How do we know that it's a Midwestern town? I mean, they say it is. They say it a lot. They're like, you know, this thing happened over in Folsom County or whatever. They're, we just, all talk about counties. Here. Because shit like this doesn't happen in New York. Yeah. 
This is, this is definitely a very Midwest the carnival. Dust Bowl they don't carnival. have the square footage for a carnival in New York. <laughs> no, they don't. Then there's two faced cows and shit. I mean, right. Well, this yeah. is okay. So this, then they go to the carnival. So what the hell? This movie just has then, the best carnival. Okay. Is this the carnival movie? Hmm. I mean, that depends. You know what you consider a carnival what is movie. One of the other carnival movies. I wonder. Adventureland. Well, Ah, that's a theme park. Movie. I always thought that uh, it's a traveling be, thing. Well, I always thought to be a carnival movie, it needed to be like carnivals you have always carnies. Been, well, it always it was inherently scary. Eventually, it's about carnies, right? Yeah, but uh, carnies yeah, have it's always a, been in, inherently scary to me, as well as the carnival environment. It's always been like a little creepy, a little like a little off, a little weird. You got a bunch of alcoholic weirdos laying around. Right, yeah. but it also, like, I've been to plenty of carnivals where, like, people have dispersed and I've just been walking through it at night and shit, and it's always felt like... How much of the know, movie so has creepy. to take place in a carnival for it to be a carnival I was movie? just going to ask Like, is Zombieland a uh, carnival movie? Is Us no. a carnival movie? Yeah, no, is no. Us a carnival movie? No. The major like points of Us happen yeah, at a carnival. Yeah, major points of like Zombieland are at a carnival. A carnival. This is about the carnival. So I'm saying Adventureland. It takes Could place be. all within the carnival. Okay. Yeah. About right. carnies. Yeah, that puts it up there. Right. Yeah. It, will, it will be in the list of carnival movies. <laughs> That's right. At least top ten, I feel. <laughs> and then Carnival, the TV show. Freaks. Okay. And, yeah, Freaks. 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 Yeah. Freaks. Okay, yes. Freaks is the carnival yeah. movie. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaks, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I would make a play for uh, Nightmare Alley. Have you ever seen that movie? Has anybody seen Nightmare Alley? Nope. nope. Is that it's a West Craven movie? No, it is. It is. Nightmare Alley. I don't know who directed it. It's uh, uh, Tyrone Powers in it. Joe Blonde, uh, Joan Blondell, who shares she's a fortune teller with the name Zena, the same as the fortune teller Zena in this movie, which I gotta believe is a direct reference to it. Um, Guillermo del Toro is remaking this movie. Nightmare Alley. Nightmare oh, is that Alley. his new thing? That's his new thing. Oh, so okay. I recommend uh, Nightmare Alley if you haven't watched it. Okay. It's actually a really good movie. Well, you said Adventure Adventureland, so we're not going strictly horror on this. This oh, is so I said across, across, that's what I was asking. This is like, across the define board. a carnival movie because mm. I mean we can go Greatest Showman is a massive mm. carnival Dumbo. movie. Are we going to put Dumbo. Dumbo in there? Oh no! Water for elephants. All right, then. Oh, Big no. fish. I could this, keep going. This, this, right, I'm like going a, with the horror like version. The carnival, yeah, yeah, carnival of Souls. That's what I'm saying. I could keep going. I know it's called. That, but there's no this carnival in it. All right, but so this <laughs> movie, this how long does the carnival sequence in this take up of running? A way lot. too much. Oh my god, I thought this movie was never going to start. Yeah, I agree. Very okay with it. See, I was okay with it. Too. I'm very okay with it. I didn't know I where like it, living in this world. Yeah, because I was waiting for like a plot to kick in. Sure, sure. At some point. I think I, are, I'm so still waiting. I'm still, <laughs> still waiting. Yeah, you yeah. Are, but I love the world. They're just because it's it's just a hangout for like most of the movie. It's a hangout movie. You're but that's not the, the movie I, I wanted. I didn't like, sign up not, for yeah. hanging out know, at the I, carnival. Yeah. I, didn't know. I I had no idea what to expect. But yeah. what I got, like hanging out at the carnival, I like that because I would love to see, hang if out at the carnival. But if I'm gonna go see Adventureland. That that's I'm okay what, with yeah, hanging that's out what at I carnival. Expect, yeah. This is called the fun house. I mean. Yeah, it's a Toby Hooper's the fun house. I'm not expecting <laughs> Adventureland. Right. Uh, uh, mm, nope. I'm I did I'm, expect I'm more to take place in a fun sure, house with sure. that title. But yeah. I didn't know what was It was more happen. like the I basement no of the idea. fun house than anything. And I above okay in the rafters yeah. of the fun house. Hanging out in the carnival. Well, this the hanging out in the carnival section of the movie takes a good chunk but yes, we're introduced to all minutes, sorts of say. weird characters this is why i, I think like i found the yeah. interest in it you have carnival barkers doing yes. weird shit like alive alive alive, alive. we have the they two-faced wriggle cow and they alive. dance yeah the <laughs> yeah <laughs> creature made by god and not man and all the carnival barkers are played by the same kevin weirdo conway. guy <laughs> kevin conway yeah. uh no conway not Conway. Kevin Conroy. The, yeah, no, yeah, that's okay. Batman. That's no, Batman. No, it's Conway. Uh, each one of the Barkers seems to make eye contact with uh, our hero heroine at yes. some point and identify, like you know, as they should. Sarah, if you're making you know, a never... creepy movie, it's Amy. Yeah, um, but we also get to introduce two weird characters. Like, um, where does she go first? The uh, well, they go see the uh, the oddities, the two headed, right? Two headed animals. Cow These are real lip cow and animals that they yeah. show in this uh in the in the movie it's kind of gross but this is what old freak shows i suppose right. were like right they did and uh eventually they go into a little tent where there's a little uh baby in the you know the, the glass the jar. amber yeah in the jar in the formaldehyde yeah. yeah with a cleft face 
Is that what I, I could, couldn't figure out what the deal was with that? Yeah, you're like, oh, look like at it. And I was like, it just looks like a face. baby. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. confused by that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So this it, is for I mean, bad, bad, bad prop work. But even if for like a carnival, they used to have just like, we have a baby mm-hmm. <laughs> just to have that on display is fucking weird. I don't yeah. know, I've been to that Body Worlds exhibit at the museum, so it's like once you've seen that, it's like true. But this yeah. is like an unregulated, like freaky carnival, and it's like, like where'd we get this baby? But I like that they actually thought like where'd they get the baby because we right. find out later it's the twin. Um, but you don't know it when you see it, mm-hmm. I guess. And also, there's a guy walking around working the amusements, you know, because you see like there's a couple homeless people, you sure. know, wandering around. Uh, there's a guy with a Frankenstein mask on who's, you know, running the, uh, the, the fun house ride. We also get to meet, uh, William Finley, who you'll know on this show. Uh, he was the phantom of the paradise. Was he in something else? Did we watch? We didn't watch mm-hmm. sisters, right? No, we have not watched sisters, but he's the phantom of the paradise. And he does this, like, I mean, all these carny huckster, uh, characters in this, what I like about them is they're all, uh, shown at some point to be, like hitting the sauce, of you course, know, or smoking while they're doing their thing. Oh, and it's just kind of magician. This, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I like this guy. Yeah, this guy's great. <laughs> I love this show. I wish they did this at current carnivals because I would love to take my kid to this. I don't know what this is about me, but I would love to just like sit <laughs> my kid down and be like, bastard. watch this shit, watch this magic that goes on. Because if that was the show, I'd be like, that's cool. Yeah, like it's a cool thing, and the kid would be like. <gasps> How do you keep that from being spoiled for the next group that comes in, though? That's what I'm like. I don't believe it. Like, this is... Like, uh, how would they not know? You know yeah, because they'd go out and tell everybody. The ah. next show's in two hours, folks. It, and, well, but, when you give a two-hour like pass between shows, then yeah. Yeah. That's a possibility. He calls somebody up from the audience, and then he does the old, they're going to stake her through the heart trick. And right. I'm like, oh, my God, is it? We actually did it. And, you know, everybody in the audience freaks but out. It's like storytelling ability up until that point. Like, I, I like it. It's the only, it's like he's old. He's drinking from his flask. He's he's telling old stories. And then I he like the heckling. The, uh, the heckling. Yeah. The heckling is <laughs> great. Get a, great. Get a real great, job. <laughs> that's a real great ingredient to yeah. that scene where he's not paying attention to it, but it's just coming in from the back. I yeah. love that. That's See, great. The, it was creative is, heckling, too. Yeah, it was wasn't good. just you suck. It was yeah, better. Right. It was deeper cutting than that. It was. <laughs> it was good. This is the little flavor that this mm-hmm. movie kind of adds to like this that. section of the movie. Because, like, I mean, like you guys are saying. It is unfocused in like where the hell it's heading. Sure, mm-hmm. it is wandering, but it's giving you these little things that are kind of like well observed moments. Mm-hmm. And there's like a series of them as we move through the the William Finley. Then we go see the fortune teller, right? Which anybody Zena. recognize her from the Sentinel? Sylvia Miles. Oh no. Yeah, she was one of the lesbians. Oh, well, oh, she's in, well uh, oh, one yeah. of the yeah. lesbians. Well, we know the other one. Yeah, yeah, the other so one's Beverly D'Angelo. Yeah. And she's, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. I thought she was familiar, but I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, so she doesn't clean up well, apparently. Um, <laughs> no, but, well, apparently not. So she plays, what was it, Zelda? Zena. 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 Yeah. Zelda. See, that's the other one. It should be Zelda Zora or Zena. Zelda Zora or Zena. Teller. It's always one of those names. Yeah. Who's affecting an accent? I always like that they're always affecting some kind of right. like European accent. Yeah. Then when you get them pissed off, they're like, "Get the fuck out of here! I'll cut your fucking right. heads that off!" That is such a common trope. Yeah, yes. but I love that it's a show. <laughs> it's always a show. They're putting on a show. That's the element I love about carnivals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's the thing about it. Like, you know, who are yeah. these mysterious people? Yeah, who travel around the world, there, or around books the country? On these, like the lives. Oh of yeah. Carnies? Oh, fuck. absolutely. I yeah. want to read absolutely. them now. Where's our like humans of New York, but it's just carnies of carnivals? Right. Like, oh, where's our <laughs> online person documenting like the lives of right. carnies oh, every it's day? Be out there let's somewhere. do it. No, yeah. let's do it. Well, <laughs> I don't want to interact with them any <laughs> Carnies, <laughs> oh I'm God. sure they're fine people. No, I'm no. sure they're when very When you go to weird stand people. next to the Ferris wheel, you I talk just don't want to talk yeah. with them. The thing all. is, though, like nowadays, ca- carnivals are so not as common that it's just. They're all Skinner's amusements, right? Like, yeah. I feel Around like they're all under they the are, same yeah. brand, yeah. it seems like. Yeah, but yeah. it's just they're all regionally thing. There are bigger ones, like, you know, that do go around. Mm-hmm. But the scale of them is obviously uh, much smaller. You got rid of the freaks and geeks tent, you yeah. know. Uh, the girls, girls, the girls, 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 girls tent is definitely no longer around. Yeah. The animals alive tent is gone. Well, it's the, the freaks and the, the freaks geeks tent, I yeah. suppose. Side shows. Now it's like basically you got your 4-H fair rides. and they bring your rides and stuff yeah. to carnivals. There's no, there's yeah. no show. 
There's no yeah, show. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. yeah. No, nobody has a show anymore. And you go in there to ride a ride, do a bumper car, win a prize. There's no show. Spend a shitload of fucking a money. A shitload of money. Holy I like shit. the way in this one they have like the little, the mess tent or whatever. Yeah, Where yeah, now you eatery. have like 16 yeah. fucking different places that all charge you. Oh, boy. Crazy amounts of money for the pickle on a stick. <sighs> <laughs> uh, pickle on a stick Cotton candy with pretzel on it Okay No we'll um, with Pickle on a stick Do you really get pickle on a stick? There is do. Summer is pickle that's, on a stick yeah. that, That's Alright Well you get that And you get the elephant ear I think that's the other thing You uh, gotta yeah, get the elephant ear No one. nobody gets a pickle on a stick They get a corn dog Oh the corn People dog get pickle I don't get the corn I get they the get pickle corn. on a stick Oh you guys are weird I get a drumstick I, big turkey Oh you get the stick There you go They never have that shit You gotta go to the county fair dude I go to the county fairs. You're not going, well, you're not going to the right tent then. I yeah, which not. county it's are you going to? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, yeah, Wrong which one, the smaller ones. Yeah, yeah that's like your problem because there's yeah. one tent that is gigantic and has a huge line and they literally just grill all kinds of meats and uh, put them on a stick. See, oh, wow. I don't so, see the turkey leg ever unless yeah. I'm going to like you guys are going to the wrong Disney. Fair. If I go to Disney, they have the turkey leg. Nobody else has the turkey leg. Six Flags has it even. Do they? Yeah. Go to the, yeah. the Renaissance And the Renaissance Fair has them too. They're sure. That makes sense. smoked at the Renaissance Fair. Because the turkeys are just fucking running around. <laughs> They're just like grab that one. You gotta go to the fucking Wisconsin State Fair. That's yeah. That every, feels like it'd be a good one. They have Huge. their menu like online is divided up by like things on a stick, Ooh, I things like that are deep fried. Like yeah. they have so many of those items. See, they have separate menus. They know what they're Wisconsin doing. State Fair is dope. Huge. Yeah, they All figured right. out the whole uh, right. you know people fair, to, fair food. Right. Yeah. People come here to yeah. eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> while they're watching tractor pulls, we'll put on a stick and fry it. Yeah, what do you want? Oreos, still do tractor Snickers. pulls? I don't think I've ever been to one. They've done. They keep doing tractor. They do that. Yeah. They will the, still do all that do, stuff. Yeah. Still happens. Yep. Do people still live in Wisconsin? Then they yeah. do tractor pulls. <laughs> well, we yeah. do those here. Yeah, like, even Boone, the local Winnebago, county fairs have Boone those. County, they do those. Yeah. 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 Does anybody do demolition derbies? Yeah. yeah they all. Oh, yeah. Where have you the, not been to a county no, fair? No, no, like a long a, time. It was around here, and nobody's just like demolition derby. No, I go to the rides. A county fair has not changed in 20, 30 years. All the same stuff is still there. They even have last. I don't know if you saw this, but I saw monkeys riding dogs in a race. Stop. <laughs> Where do you go? <laughs> Boone County Fair, dude. <laughs> this is That's in our backyard. Fair? Yes. Holy shit. Wow. Somebody, uh, all right, their advertising sucks. Yeah. Because I had no idea monkeys, there were monkeys, monkeys riding, riding dogs. dogs. They wear little cowboy outfits and they ride the Fuck dogs me. in a race. All it's right. amazing. They have pig races, too. I'm making uh, <laughs> making this appointment for next year because, goddamn. Oh, wow. I like no I said, idea. it has not changed in like 30 years. No Everything idea. is exactly the same and it's the same I love every year. Carney folk. <laughs> God and, they, damn it. and they always have a country stage. Mm-hmm. Always a country always, stage. Always, always, always a country stage. stage. Always a country stage. There's your show. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe that's the show. <laughs> yeah. no, it's just I'm just going for the monkeys riding dogs. <laughs> it's God pretty great. It. Well, okay, so I mean that. So, but that's the the that's, the, the thrill of that's going. It. Yeah, that's yeah. the thrill. <laughs> that you're gonna see something weird. You yeah, know, they like weird shit. Else. I don't see this anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, all right then. Next yeah. year, now we're out done with the season. I'm glad so that we just went over the whole itinerary for the local <laughs> county fair. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> all of this is captured in this amazing film called The Fun House. Yeah. Well, there's no monkeys riding dogs, unfortunately. No. Um, so uh, eventually our uh, 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 quartet of heroes um, gets this idea that they're going to spend the night in the fun house, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, somebody did it at the other uh, fair. And also, uh, I, I totally forgot at the beginning, uh, Amy's dad says, don't go to that carnival. Because right. that's the same carnival that went to. Uh, went through Dallas. Something county. It was, uh, it was a county. Because, again, sure. we're a Midwestern thing. They, they went through something county. county where they had that trouble and they found those two girls. Yeah. So the idea being like, okay, this is going to be one of those movies. Yeah. Where you have, because this is the other thing with like carny folk, right? They're murderers. <laughs> and they're 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 cannibals and murderers, <laughs> right. and they pack up and move, and you can't ever track where they went, right? Because they were here, and then they they vanished. Because they're usually gone overnight, like yeah. the thing. Because like you ever seen something wicked this way comes or whatever? I mean, yeah. like the the idea of the dust bowl, mm. and that's one. I guess you had the the Ringling Brothers, and you know all these other like smaller uh, uh, fairs and stuff like carnivals would move around the country, and I suppose then. You know, could you find out if you were the officialdom of whatever podunk, you know, mm. USA and the carnival packed up and moved? If you're not part of the group, do you know where they're going next? 
I don't think so. There has to be a management group somewhere that you can contact, but who was the management group? Mm. They had to have filled out a permit. Okay, I'm going down the... Okay. But I no, I think there's a a lot of vagueness to the uh, (laughs) this carnival coming into town and then leaving. Yeah. I think the uh, the opportunity to murder people is there. But part of the appeal, I think, for kids is the idea that, like, man, that's a life of adventure. There's tigers and fucking... This is the whole thing of, like, to run away and run away and join the circus. This is the whole... Run away with the carnival. And yeah, unfortunately, it's you go places and shit. You end up like an alcoholic or a prostitute, like you know, basically <laughs> working behind the scenes in these dirty, filthy. Hey, Colin, you tents. can be both if you want. Uh, it's it's true. true, it's true. Bag, As we find out in this movie, where Sylvia Miles from the Sentinel mm. uh, offers her services at a exorbitant rate. To the fellow in the Frankenstein mask. And Junior, this is, we'll call him. Uh, his name is Gunther, but I only know that because... Gunther. <laughs> right. Um, or maybe that's the guy who played him. I think his character is Gunther. So... Uh, sort our, of like Gunner. We have... Our friends have uh, uh, broken into the funhouse. They mm-hmm. basically went through the ride and jumped off. Bunch of scary shit. This is why I thought of this movie, actually. When we were talking about a Halloween pick, mm. because the imagery in this movie, like read to me as Halloween, yeah. even though it's not, but it's like all horror movie, right. crazy lit shit. Uh, they jump off to make out and spend the night there, but they end up uh, like above, I don't know, the office or something or right. where uh, it's Gunter built lives. Up the main stage and there's obviously something below it, apparently. The fun house in this is like a massive complex. It's very big. Like when I you go to a carnival and you see the fun house, it's like this little dinky thing, right? right. Takes, Not this one. But takes that's a what, minute to get through. That's what this one looks like on the from the front, though. Yeah, the it looks one. like those the pull up trailers that you know yeah. fold down and right. it's like like the yeah. one in Greece. Apparently, for example. there's like a hundred yeah. feet back behind it. Yeah, yeah and, and this and one. Yeah, and it has a sub base. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they dug, down they the dug a basement just to right. be in this There's town a for a couple of, days. Like, handiwork, I felt like that went into building this thing for the weekend that it was there. Yeah. Damn. It's probably five days. They start on like Tuesday. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Right, okay. But there's a lot of work that goes into it where you have a, like you said, a sub basement and yeah. there's levels to it. <laughs> there's an attic and shit. Yeah. Yeah. There's the upstairs, the main floor, and then the basement, apparently. Does where everything just fold up into a flat right? wall? They take I, it I down. Like it would. There's a lot of chains and hooks and Oof, shit yeah, like that. A lot. This there's thing a lot right? of gears and yeah. things. Jesus. Giant, giant, heavy iron gears. Yes. Right? Yeah. In the basement. Yes. Anyway, these kids looking through the slats in the, uh, you know, the uh, improperly put together wood floor are able to watch this transaction between the fortune teller and Junior, where she does uh, a command an absorbent, exorbitant rate of money. <laughs> absorbent rate. Right. Which he gets out of a, a lockbox, right? right? Which is the money from, you know, the fun house. Right. That they've collected throughout the night. And then uh, she pleasures him. But unfortunately, he comes early. Yes, he does. and uh, the uh, then she's like, "Okay, well, you know, I mean, that was that's not uh, my fault." Was, yeah, which I'm on her side. That's not her fault. Yeah, and she was. This is what she does for a living: yeah. is uh, con people out of, out of money. It's fine. <laughs> so she did. None it. of this is her fault. So uh, he, of course, is uh, not happy about this arrangement. It's like you know, I paid a hundred dollars and. This should have gone on for a little longer. So he strangles her to death yes. in the office. Freaked out. They see this and are like, oh, my God, we've just now witnessed a murder. Yes. And he goes off to get, uh, to, well, we don't know, presumably to go run away. Or, Find his or, father. Yeah. Which is the carnival barker. Or one barker. of them, it turns out. Kevin Conway. So what, at this point, like. Uh, this is where the movie actually, I guess, is kicking into gear. This, this is, is the actual we, movie right. has started. This is our our carnival movie has started at this point. Like, kick. Well, this is gear. the funhouse movie. The fun. That's yeah. what I mean. The funhouse movie has started. Yeah, there. because is it here we get uh, Gunther unmasked? Uh, we get to. Well, it keeps going because they eventually make their way down to the. I'm going to say the main level. Um, they go by the office where they saw the murder and try and get out the door, which is locked by a chain. It's a steel door with a chain on it. Right. What they do you would, expect me to do? If they all just rushed at that door, I'm pretty sure they'd be able to break it open and get the fuck out. 
it's, which, it's not a permanent structure. None of this is right. Yeah, no, you know? yeah. like it feels like there'd be like a false wall somewhere they could break through. Yeah, mm-hmm. this whole so, establishment is pretty janky. Yeah, this they, we saw like, that bathroom. Like, yeah, <laughs> like that's why I don't. Under, it's not like they were locked into the carnival. Like carnivals are not permanent structures. You can find yeah. a way to get out. There usually, should be a way. Usually out they have this. shitty fences around them. Right. You know, like there should and, be a way out of this yeah. building. But there's, yeah. there's always emergency exits, fire exits. Like yeah. there's there are. Things. But they're closing down. There this is after right. hours. Everything right? is Everybody's shutting it down. Not there. Like, yeah. I, I feel like it could be but easy again, to get out. But again, if they wanted to, and they just witnessed a murder, so they should be able to. I I would be trying to break that door down. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they hard. don't want to alert the potential murderer. Sure. To, so I think that's the well, that's the idea. That, that is the, movie the idea. Gives that's us, what they want. Yeah, is they don't want to alert people to the fact that they're there. But Richie, yeah, that son of a bitch has an idea. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm gonna go make sure she's dead. <laughs> nudge, I'm nudge. Go put my fingerprints all over the dead body. But what does he do? He goes and steals money from the lockbox because he saw it from above. So he steals the yeah. Which you know what? All right, I can't blame him for it. It's money. I, I can. I. This I mean, this is the moment that dooms them. Is, it is. That's should, because you shouldn't be, do this shit. And this is the moral of the This should not be your priority. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. No. It should be I the see where his thought process I, is going I, I, now because he's a shitty person. That's well, what the problem. That's, and he no, gets it, everything he deserves. But like. There's a murder, so like any cash that's missing is going to be secondary to a murder. You know what I'm saying? Sure, so like if there's ever, enough, I'm not saying I'm just saying I understand his logic. All I'm saying is I understand why you'd be like this is the perfect opportunity to take some money. I agree with that. It makes sense. I just <laughs> think I, I I agree. I agree with that thought process. But if I just witnessed a murder, I would not be thinking about that. I guess is my problem. Yeah, no, I, 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 just, you never know. Never know. Richie's uh, trying to pay for his dorm. He's no, got one know. more year of college to go. Yeah. He's always thinking about money. He's got one, one year of high school. Or high they school. They did I'm say sorry. something about, like, school. you got to be 21. Has, they couldn't get in the girly right. tent because they, they were asked, under 21. He asked him in the car. He said, How right. many, do you have another year? He said, yeah, I have another year. He goes, college, college afterwards? Right. And he's uh, like, if I get in. He's in high school. He's in high school. That look like they're 30. Yeah, all these people look like they're in their mid-30s. <laughs> well, uh, that was go the that 80s far, was, but yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, they do look. Oh, like, at least twenties. Uh, uh, Mini, you kind of look like she was uh, young enough to be in high school. She looked young. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say to that, right. but yeah. Um. So uh, this then then the the Barker shows up right because uh, Gunther went and got his his dad. Yeah, this is what we find out it's his dad. There's a actorly dynamic but don't ever call me that hate hearing the sound of your voice Mm -hmm. i like this guy as an actor as a performance i think i like the performance yeah yeah he uh realizes of course that somebody's been watching because the money is gone right (laughs) and like wow we gotta we gotta take care of this not anything you haven't done before yeah and it's also when the son uh freaks out this is when he freaks out and starts yeah. you know, trashing everything, which was, I, for me, was like a tense moment because just to see him freak out and then rip his mask off at that point. And what do we have under that mask? Uh, uh, a mongoloid vampire of some sort. <laughs> now, I've seen this face before. I didn't know it came from this movie. This is a Rick Baker creation. That's great because yeah. I've seen that face. Yeah. But I never they knew have it a came from budget? the funhouse. I mean, it's a studio film. I mean, it, but but like, it doesn't really like, seem to also, move. At it, all, right? It is. It it's very, does it's also, very much a rubber mask. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. move it or anything. It does feel like yeah. a rubber mask and rubber hands. Yeah, yeah. It really does feel it like really that. Really does. Yeah. I but mean, again. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying it's not effective. Like right. I think the design is pretty decent, but it did feel. But for being budget. Rick Baker, no, right. I agree. If Rick Baker like, made something, it's probably budget. the sculpt. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I don't know that he because there's another guy credited. So I'm like, did Rick Baker sculpt it? And the other guy was in charge of actually, like, you know, making it do something, I, it which it drools be. a lot, which is gross. So, I mean, you got right, that. Yeah. But How much effort would it take to just make the bottom jaw move a little bit, even, uh, you know? You're like, going to put, like, gears and gizmos and shit like that. I don't know. I don't we know. have a whole fucking carnival built, though. Yeah, that was very <laughs> true. I don't know. But it is very, it is uh, somewhat limited, I would say. Or maybe you just hired the wrong guy. We got to find out. Put some fucking had... googly eyes on it then, so the eyes at least <laughs> yeah, it's got these red eyes, eyes. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. white hair, which is kind of weird for like somebody who's supposed to be, I assume, like a young person. Sure, because they treat him like you know he's an idiot, and uh, you know doesn't understand very much about the world or whatever. Right. And that's why apparently he keeps on killing these girls or children at the different places yes. that they go. And dad 
the Barker has been covering up for this. Yes. Um, so he's the dangerous threat. The movie basically at this point becomes where well, you expect a slasher movie, you get a monster movie. Toby Hooper is doing like I'm working at Universal Pictures. Right. I'm making a monster movie. Yes. And I got Rick Baker, who I guess wasn't really I mean, he had won the Oscar for um no, that was the same year, right? This year, nineteen eighty one. He won the Oscar for American Werewolf in London. Mm. So he hadn't won the Oscar at the point in right. time that this was made. This. Yeah. And so you got this monster, which, yeah, I think uh, it's a cool look, even if sure. it's not articulated to the, the, the best that it could be. And it's a guy in a mask, ultimately. But, yeah, it's it, he's got an oversized head that you're like, how did that fit inside of that Frankenstein it feels, mask? It feels, ex- uh, for the reveal, it feels extreme. Like, I was expecting may- maybe, like, a mutated human yeah. face. This feels like something from outer space. <laughs> it, yes. it, it really, it and doesn't. It screams. It, it, doesn't, it does. It doesn't feel like it fits yeah. under that mask. I was thinking, you know, maybe something like like Hellhouse or something. Something like, a little like, altered. Like the Goonies. Like something Right, but still human. Boy, but this feels this like an like, alien. I agree with, like, fucking <laughs> vampire. It does. Yeah, it feels like, like it's something weird. otherworldly, which yeah, I was not They're expecting. Like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't feel like it fits within this kind of universe of freaks, but... All right, it's still a cool look. Mm. It just feels like it's way more than they needed to do for that character. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. they're making a, a statement. With they, that. they really like, are. They're just like, oh, shit. We got to have a monster in this movie, so he's going to be monstrous. So they made a monster. And then this is where you find out that the carnival barker is, a, he was a twin, I assume, and the other one is on display. Yeah. In the uh, the the human oddities tent. You know what he reminded me of, Holly. Mm-hmm. You'll get this. You yeah. remember in like the first season of Thirty Rock when Paul Rubens was on and played the in inbred yes. prince that like was a mongoloid because yes. the family was so inbred and he like screamed and he was like, "It feels so good to laugh." Like that's <laughs> he's, that character's laugh was exactly like this monster scream, and they great. had like similar facial You're features. You're so right. It was so funny. Oh I couldn't stop god. thinking about that. I was like, oh my god, it's just you like that episode so of Thirty right. Rock. <laughs> that's amazing. We should post like a side by side. Yes. That's fantastic. All right, you make it. I'll post it. Yeah, we'll right. do that. There it is. Um, so then the, the movie basically becomes them trying to uh, escape from the fun house, yeah. which is, as we said, it's a small confined space with maybe two levels, and they can't seem to find a way out. And there's no. a lot of shadows and monster shit all over the place. And traps. And traps. Traps. Or where traps. certain which, characters which, get. Which would assume that this is all set up. Previously, like this is just part of the fun house. Like there yeah. are traps. There are trap doors. There are nooses that will come down just in case. Well, he knows his way house. around in the very true. It, in the, the fourth floor of the fun house where yeah. the uh, you know yeah, yeah above drop the it down. yeah he's hanging and people catch Richie and hang him yeah when they have the the storm machine going off which is basically like an actual movie thunderstorm right is kind of happening like which I like place. which is cool. Yeah, it's very loud on the soundtrack. Yeah. A lot of stuff, the jump scares. I don't know. There's loud things that happen out of nowhere. Uh, and basically, them, yeah. that's it, though. Very loud. The uh, sound mixing, it just felt like everything was just turned up super loud. Like, yeah. there was no separation of levels or anything. It seemed like everything was just mad max. I thought some of the, some of the, the, the like, the dude screaming was louder than the people talking. Mm-hmm. You know, that yeah. kind of, like, they did certain things for, like, punctuation, mm-hmm. but it was, like, this is the type of thing. I mean, I don't know if it's effective, then it works. Right. But it's the type of movie that you know critics go after for like, well, anyone jumps when you fucking go boo, yeah. really fucking when, loud. If you're right? loud enough, that's anyone true. will jump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, eventually, we whittle the cast down. Right. Liz gets dropped through a trap door, and she ends up in a fight with the with Junior. And claws you know, her to death. Yeah, yeah in like, like a, a, a turbine. Right, which would have been, like yeah, I mentioned this during the movie. Yeah, what the fuck? Like you set this you scene in front of a giant the, metal fan, and somebody you don't go should for go it? in the fan. Like because yeah. they they what do were they, it, and they even set it up to be that way because yeah. they're both struggling uh, at a certain point in fighting, and they both we see the like bottom half towards, of their, yeah. they inch towards the yeah. fan. We see the bottom half of their bodies. The uh, 
conclusion that we would all come to is that somebody goes into the fan. We we hear a brrrr yes. and see a blood spurt. See a blood spurt. And we don't Why know, didn't that happen? And we don't know who went into the fan yeah. until it's revealed, which seems like the obvious conclusion of this. Logically. Logically, Why this is what should happen and would have been cool. Well, so this movie, it makes two like uh, explicit fan uh, moments. One where uh, uh, Liz is in that confrontation with Junior yeah. and yep. another where Amy's Amy yelling. is trying to, yeah, because yeah. she sees her parents. her parents are in the carnival because they've come to pick up her brother. This is the other plot line that Which goes. Which we completely <laughs> forget about because it, it does nothing. It adds to nothing. Yeah, this one, okay, I'm going to give anybody who has a criticism about this a full marks sure. because <laughs> the, the kid... The brother who tried to stab the sister in the opening scene. Yeah, the pervy little brother. We didn't mention that. He's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. That's right. He attacks her naked in the shower. Yeah. Yep. Uh, not normal. Not normal. And then uh, she threatens him, basically, and says, like, I'm going to get you if it's the last fucking thing I do or something. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. This is important because yep. basically then he it tails, well, because it ends his involvement in the movie, it does. which yeah. I'm like, was that, they just played that to like try and- it? figure out how to exit this character from the, the thing. Right. But he follows her and her friends to the, he walks to the carnival. Uh, I think he's accosted by like some guy who <laughs> pulls up in and a like, truck with a shotgun. Hey, Sonny, you want to get into my car? And, and he's, he's like, yeah. yeah. And he's got all black teeth. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> kid, guy who just likes to scare kids, but he witnesses as his sister and their friends go into the carnival, but don't come or into the fun house, but don't come out. Right. And then he gets scared and gets knocked out, if I'm correct, and then wakes up in a carny tent where some carny is lovingly stroking his face with a, like, I washed, you know, he's got his parents I there. I like, washed him. <laughs> yeah. And I held this very crinkly ice back to his face. Yeah. I took care of him. He's fine. He's I didn't a good touch boy. him. I didn't touch him. Yeah. You can have him back. Turns him over to the parents. And then we see him looking at the funhouse where he knows his sister is in there. But then we hear the memory of, I'm going to mm. get you if it's the last thing I do. And because of that, he decides Fuck her. <laughs> not to tell the parents that she's in there. And I they go home so. and exit the movie. It's That's the it. weirdest fucking thing. It's very weird. <laughs> yeah. Which I feel like that was an editing thing. Like he they just, just cut something, something cut out. And then they just said, well, if we play this audio, it'll make it seem like. Here's his motivation. I guess so. Out of the movie. I guess. I, Doesn't I make too much Why sense. even have the little brother in it at all? I feel like they needed something. I don't know. I don't know either. I feel like they needed something to cut to, and then they ultimately Pad for got, time, because there's an, no story They got here. to an end, yeah. and they're just like, we don't know what to do, so we're going to do this. But yeah. I feel yeah. like they wanted to cut away from the main storyline, but they had oh, nothing well, to go to. Eh, main storyline. A lot of this movie felt like they were like, we don't know what to do, so let's do this. That kind of felt like a main theme. I think this is Toby Hooper's work ethic. I yeah. think Toby Hooper was just basically stoned out of his mind all the time. Mm -hmm. And Probably. somehow, that's sort of like, how the fuck did they get Texas Chainsaw Massacre out of, you know, just chaos? Because whenever you read, like, how he worked on that movie, it was chaos. But somehow, uh -huh. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out of it. Sure. Um, read uh, Te Chainsaw Confidential. By Gunnar Gunnar Hansen's Hansen. book. Yeah. It's a good book. Mm -hmm. mm. I'll give you some insight into that whole thing. Madness. Madness. It Somehow is still a madness. classic fucking movie came out of it. Yeah. Um but and I don't know Eaten Alive, and I don't know the production on uh uh Salem's Lot. But Salem's mm -hmm. Lot's like a conventional film. And then Funhouse is like odds and ends or something. Um eventually there is a confrontation in the little gear room and Gunther uh -huh. Ends up going into uh, the two giant which, Metal Gears, yeah, which There's, bothered me. Which they, I, if, if that was their intention, worked out beautifully because I was very bothered seeing those gears come together. I'm like, something's going in there and getting crushed. Yeah, and it's it's. I, I, I the ultimate end of it was not did not live up to what I had envisioned in my you mind. Thought he'd go, like I thought go. I wanted thirty days. No, a I night wanted blood, and it, I yeah. wanted him to be like halved. I wanted his yeah, legs but, gone. I, mean, I want him to go through but it. But based on everything else we got in this movie, you should have known. I should, I should have known. There was going to be no, yeah. like, And there was a lot of... Energy. Why was there no gory deaths if we're in that know. era of gory makeup? Of What's this movie rated? Rated R. For boobs? For boobs? Yeah, for boobs. 
<laughs> I was gonna say that I can't imagine what else would be rated. Well, you got uh, sexy stuff that's uh, yeah, not like kid the friendly. sex related stuff. Yeah, that, but beyond that's that, it. it's like yeah. yeah, scary. There was a lot of moments of violent imagery. build up to nowhere in this. Like mm-hmm. the whole time that she was in the the basement waiting for him to come down, she kept like looking at the trap door. Right, <laughs> like what was gonna something should have happened. That, there. Yeah, she just kept staring at like the hanging piece of metal, like the something vent, should like have the, there. the vent cover. She just kept staring. I was like, this is taking fucking forever. Oh, I get it. Well, she was looking at like that was her ex. That was the escape, right? That's right. how she's getting out. But she has to get past these twirling fucking things, and so she's got to duck under. Under. Yeah, it's not articulated well, no. but I think that's what's it's going on. Well. No, not at all. The, the ending does, yeah, in that scene takes forever. And at that point, I was like, and she has like this one look on her face, this actress. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with the, the giant, the jaw open. It's a giant, like, open mouth. You know, it's all I a remember. Gape. A gape. Yeah. The gaping mouth <laughs> that she's like screaming in horror, frozen in fear yeah. at what she's seeing. Um, it almost becomes comical because they keep cutting back and forth to it. Mm. But I was like, how many lines of dialogue has she had in this movie? No. I'm like, I don't remember the last time she spoke. Like, she spoke a lot and had a lot of... Um, Earlier on. Yeah, she seemed like she was very forthright, kind of, you know, dealing with both her parents and her uh, uh, date for the night. Yeah. And then pretty much once they get going... She's just kind of like, oh, shucks, you know, the whole way through the rest of the movie and then right. becomes like, ah, ah, there's horrible shit happening. I mean, it doesn't make like for a really compelling uh, character, no. but she does survive uh, because she both electrocutes and sends Gunther through the, in the big, you know, because you got to have an end of movie that you remember sure. with sparks flying all over the place and dude getting chewed up in the metal thing. It the is Barker really gets uh, impaled on him you know, a uh, sword uh, yeah. a, that a suit of armor has, but everybody else in the cast gets, which uh, is a pretty interesting fight. And I like what they did with that, that whole Barker scene where he holds him at gunpoint and then they fight and he gets impaled on the sword. And then uh, what's his name? Gets Buzz. also impaled. Buzz. Buzz also gets impaled on the sword a little bit. Yep. And then there's a whole couple gunshots and then, he ends up in a clown's arms. And, uh, some good stuff in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that goes. <laughs> it was the, men, the theater of the mind. Yes, right there. it like, really is. Yeah, like, how'd, how'd that huh? happen? But then yeah. we end up with a, a fireworks show in the basement of this place. Yeah. Which goes on for a little too long, probably. Yeah. I would have preferred, like, let's take some of that money and put it towards taking this dude's legs off. Yeah. Would have been good. Mace Newfeld, the producer on this, I think eventually produced The Hunt for Red October. Really? I hmm. think so. Interesting. Just throwing that out there. Okay. I don't know why. Making random associations. I see. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, dude's dead. She comes out of the uh, funhouse. Daytime. All everybody's looking at her yeah, like, what the fuck have you been through? Because you can get out of it. Right. Yeah, but she escaped through the hole. But I think it collapsed. Yeah. Everything, there was a collapse of things at the end of I this movie. Really collapse. Was well, there? there was there were things like broke apart. I don't know. Oh. I, I feel think like she the, got out through the, the hole ladder. that she had to get past to, you know. It was like where the kid was looking in before, and Gunther was like, "Rah!" Trying well, to no, grab him because she came out on the stage up front. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I feel like right, it made no sense at all. Well, I feel like <laughs> well, I feel like there was. Uh, I may be adding more to this than there was in the movie, but like him going through the gears and the like, the ladder fell down and he oh, went through it and everything so it broke. The I feel fun like house. He, I feel like something broke where yeah. she was able to get up and get out. All right, I'm with you, Sean. I'm right, with I, you. There. I feel okay. like that's what happened. That is what happened. Otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> they really were just like, <laughs> oh yeah, you can walk out the front. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna give it that, and uh, that'll be it. I won't right. think about it anymore. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, then and credits roll because you're like uh, yeah. people are dead and it's over. I'm actually surprised that it didn't end like the dude got you know like boom credits. No, it actually goes for like two more scenes where she sees the fun house, uh, you know, yeah. whatever the big electronic thing on the top. Go, rah, it's always rah, Big Bertha. Because it's laughing at her. Right. Rah, right? Oh, you survive oh, this. Oh, oh, and oh. then, uh, you know, crane shot because uh, Toby Hooper that, now that he's working with Universal, he can afford he's a like, crane. I need a crane. And he employs it at least twice in this movie that we're going to go up as high up as the, uh, the Ferris wheel and take these long shots of the fun house. Yes. Or of uh, the carnival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to hear what you guys thought of this movie. I think I know how this is going to break down. I think yeah. I know. 
I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, we're going to find out. Listener, you want to know what all of us each individually thought of the fun house and whether we would recommend it to you. But first, we're going to do something even more exciting. And you know what that is? We're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and that's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got his little Frankenstein mask and rubber hands on today. He wears those all. <laughs> Do you remember when you used to be able to buy those like Frankenstein masks? Oh, they're not Frankenstein hands. They're Hulk hands. That's now they do that, Igor. Yeah. That's, that's those different. Those hurt. Those hurt when you that's get punched. Them. Different. It's weird. Yeah. He's trying. He's trying now. It's like the only thing that's he in likes stores to be right festive. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, tell you what, we should probably remind people how they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Giant Freak Show. What about Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. How about by email? Giant Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And possibly on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. MF Mad, the keeper of the wall of fame, Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. would like us to know Uh-oh. that Toby Hooper has finally made it on the oh, wall of fame. All right. Ironically, not all as a director. He was the director of the Fun House and the director of Life Force, which we covered on this show also. Uh, Sleepwalkers got him on the wall, he didn't he? He was it? a star. Uh, or, yeah, he had a role. Did he not direct Texas Chainsaw Massacre too? Yeah, what the fuck? There so we go. He's yeah. been, he's, he's he been is on the wall, wall as a director. Yeah. No. You are correct. Michaela. Yeah. Right. Well, do we have... But, so this so is the this fourth, is the, but this he was in Sleepwalkers. Well, what was the? I'm sorry, I, Texas Chainsaw Two, <laughs> the right. Fun House, Post. Life Force. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. fine. He's been director. Yeah. The director gets on yeah. the wall. Yes, so he's been on the wall. Yeah, MF Mad. Oh, all right. Yeah. I was gonna say he was declared, but all right, right. Yeah, Texas for, for Chainsaw director. Massacre Two. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Then we're not vetting it. So I mean, it's just it's a horrible. Well, horrible. yeah, we are really just going with what he says. <laughs> well, MF Mad also says that uh, he thought the Fun House was a fun movie. He really liked the monster design, and he's pretty sure the little boy that snuck out to the carnival later runs away because his parents forgot his birthday and then gets killed by a weird cat gypsy creature in Spookies. I don't... Spookies! Oh, shit. He might be right. Well, Jim Spookies. Jim Otto says he was probably 14 or 15 when he first saw the fun house, and he absolutely loved it. It's another one that has a soft spot in his heart. I, I gotta wonder what it's like to watch a movie at that this movie at that age. Yeah, uh, it well. might might really work, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew John says that uh, the Fun House is his favorite Toby Hooper movie. What? What? Damn, that's a that that is a hot take. <laughs> I can see it though. Does he know what over else Texas Chainsaw? Done? Over Texas Chainsaw. I can see it. I know. I can uh, see it. Sean Roger Blasphemy. disagrees. He says there's nothing memorable about this flick whatsoever. <laughs> uh, Teresa Ann writes in and says, Dean Koontz wrote the novelization to this and added some pretty interesting twists. That's interesting. Now, yeah, but hmm. when people are like, that's bullshit because Dean Koontz didn't write it. It was a pen name. He did write it under a pseudonym. Did he? That's right. Ooh, I want to read that now. Uh, Carson Snar writes in and says, I like the opening credits with all the creepy animatronics and the monster looks pretty awesome too. It's not a spectacular movie, but the eerie imagery and the idea of spending the night in a fun house is a cool concept. Yeah, the credits were dope. Yeah, they were good. Because they're all, well, explain, what are we talking about? It's a bunch of, like, little mechanical animatronic, like, clowns and, like, Jack in the Box and creepy shit like that. And when they come over with, like, the guy who did the music for the the movie, like, there's an animatronic dude trying playing the piano and shit. Yeah, Yeah. marionettes and weird shit. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. it was promising credits for sure. All this stuff that's just plain creepy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, uh, despite everything, it's probably still a better run carnival than any I've ever been to. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, the carnies, we were, we were talking about how awesome the carnival looked. Yeah. Yeah. So, looks They're way really better than anything effort I've been forward, to. More effort than I ever saw a carny do in my yeah. life. Yeah. Except maybe American, uh, horror story freak show. No? Better, better. That wasn't really a carnival. It was just like, come, they just like performed in yeah. a tent and that yeah, was, was pretty much it. A- 
It was yeah. It was a lot of singing. Shows. Instead of a uh, double headed cow, we had double headed Sarah Paulson. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right? Because you had the and the season geeks. still wasn't good. Uh, oh, I had hope for that one. Oh. Dave Forbes says, "Man, what a wasted opportunity! No gore and that mask. Amazing how we crammed all that into the Frankenstein mask." Was Texas Chainsaw a fluke for Toby Hooper? Mm-hmm. Loving the show. Keep it, guys and gal, guys and dolls. Keep it something. Keep guys it, and dolls. Keep it Thank you very much, cool. Dave. Keep it cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah appreciate Thank that. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah. That's a, and that was a good synopsis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about the house on Haunted Hill, which we did two weeks ago, Feline Fatal writes in and says, Ghost Ship. Oh, because it was a Dark yeah. Castle movie. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah Feline Fatal says, Ghost Ship has one of the best mass murder slash body horror scenes. I made the mistake of eating spaghetti and meatballs during my first watch. Big mistake. <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs seems to be the worst thing you could eat during a horror movie. Depending gory, on the movie. Depends. A gory horror depends, movie? Yeah. Depending on the movie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Simon Carter writes in. I'm going to try and do this justice. God damn it. What's that twitchy shit I was talking about? It freaks me the fuck out. I'm way too drunk to be trying to focus on a blurry image. At least I hope it's a blurry image. <laughs> what the fuck? God. Thank you for writing in. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God>. All <laughs> right, next. <laughs> Pat Nowacki. I don't even know what's going on. No, I like it when people <laughs> drunkenly write it. Yeah, yeah. it's great. <laughs> Bravo, please do more. That's amazing. Uh, if, if nothing else, we can get conned or reenacted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pat Nowacki says uh, that uh, Jeffrey Rush is fantastic in this movie. Uh, Vic Artreat says, yep, and he's standing right in front of the Hulk coaster Vic at Archie. Universal's Orlando Islands of Adventure true. at the beginning of House of Haunted Hill. Yeah. Very true. He's, he's actually playing- not standing in front of it. They had to super, they had to composite him into that because that would be very dangerous for a person to stand in front of that roller coaster as it was coming up. Yeah. So that I is not a real shot. Finding that out. Not real. Um, but he's playing a character named Stephen Price, which yes. is based on Vincent Price. Yes. Maya Madsen says, speaking of Vincent Price, his daughter, Victoria Price, is featured guest at the HP Lovecraft Film Festival in Portland this weekend, which is several nice. weekends ago by the time you're listening to this. Uh, Roger Corman's also going to be there. They're going to be showing the Haunted Palace. Fun stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Sidebar, they're also hosting the West Coast premiere of Richard Stanley's new film, The Color Out of Space, right. uh, which is based on a Lovecraft short story. I'm going to optimistically assumed based on no information that it'll be an instant B movie classic that we might get to hear about on a future episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Maybe. Mm. Well, yeah. first of all, let us know how it is when you see it. Yeah, I'm curious. Well, it has Nicolas Cage in it. it. Yeah, I know, but I'm hearing really good things about it. Actually, I am too. Yeah, I've heard I hear a lot that of good it's things. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ooh, Cage is crazy. But I mean, I'm down to do it on yeah, the I'm Freak Show for well. sure. Yeah. This could be good. I mean, the Richard, color out Richard of space. Stanley. Come on, we got it. Like, well, he hasn't done anything. I know. Since, um, Right. What was that fucking anthology thing that he did? And it was, uh, I can't remember. Mm. The Theater Bazaar. He mm. did uh, The Mother of Toads or something like that. It was a short one. <laughs> <Lord. event>. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure. And before that, I mean, obviously, Hardware and Dust Devil. Mm. And he famously got kicked off of uh, the, uh, right, which is the Island hardware? of Dr. Dr. Moreau. Moreau. Yeah. Huh? He did Hardware? Yeah. That was his first movie. The hardware that you love yeah. that I make fun of you for? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's right. He's I back. about that. He's back and he made a movie <laughs> with Nicolas Cage. That's so an H.P. Know. Lovecraft yeah. adaptation. Yeah, we have, have to do it. We movie. have to do it. I mean, we might. Yeah, I think we have to. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> it's, our, it's our duty to do it. Yeah. It's our duty. <laughs> yes. You said dude. I did. Uh, Leamy72 can't believe that the nurse from House of Haunted Hill is Gozer. And that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. She is. She's good. We were yeah. all very surprised about that one. Svetlana something. I can't remember. Shlopstika. Yeah. 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 And uh, about our review of the movie Sphere. Oh, shit. That, that's right. that was a long time ago. Well, yeah, one. but people on YouTube find stuff from like a hundred fucking years ago. <laughs> yeah. Jeff SS says, uh, guys, a little offensive at the end of this episode. Believe it. There are people who like this movie that are also intelligent beings. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shit. I'm I'm. Yeah, I'm. Right. I'm give sure us, that Venn diagram give exists. Give us more of your thoughts. Yeah, because uh, yeah, 
We appreciate you writing in, Jeff. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. We Thank can't, we can't actually remember what we said at the no, end. No, I have no idea. I did. No, sure <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was like over a year ago, yeah. I think. So, uh, so I, just gotta... remember, I just remember all of us being angry at how bored we were with that movie. Yeah. I just remember lots of books falling out of cabinets in that yeah. movie because that sure. book was like duplicating or whatever. What was the name of the, uh, when the alien was talking to Dustin Hoffman? Like he was Jimmy? Or Don't remember. Dustin I have no something. idea. Or Queen Latifah no being idea. like, so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Like 20 times before she got smothered by jellyfish. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> that movie's God damn good. it. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in a while. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, now we're going to go to the mattresses with the fun house. We're going to start with Sean. What did you think of the fun house? God damn it. I had a lot of fun with the fun house tonight. Um, I know this is going to, I think, offend half of the freak show right now, but um, I, I really had a good time. I love the atmosphere of the fun house. I love, I want, I want to do what they're doing. I want to go hang out. I want to go live in a fun house for a night. The fun um, house is not what I have problems with. Well, movie. I know. But, uh, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But I mean, I, I like I don't care that there's like there's nothing propelling this movie for like the first fifty <laughs> minutes of it. That that's fine with me. Wait, I lo- first fifty. I'm gonna say yeah, first a, fifty a minutes. It, it feels it's like a, a long while. time. That there's no, we're not going anywhere. But I'm okay with that. I like hanging out in this with these people in this atmosphere. I love just going to the carnival. Um, I've always had. I I love haunted houses. I love just being able to hang out in this atmosphere and it's if we don't do anything that's fine because i think like the imagery and just everything they're going through like it's it's fun to me i like just exploring this stuff when we get to the point where you know um uh carnies start attacking people and they reveal themselves to be fucking weird uh uh vampires and shit like like that is only like it's the cherry on top for me for this movie maybe um, that is a throwback to freaks i i think it, there's the, something some to it of, there yeah. i mean but they're always there i think everything if you're going to be in like a carnival uh of, of some sort i think it's always like it feels like always a throwback to freaks or uh, uh carnies are the other there's something different about them there's something different about this world um and i'm all for it and we even get like it's not it doesn't feel like uh, it's definitely not a slasher movie is it a, uh, uh, it doesn't feel a horror movie it feels like an escape movie like they find themselves like they witness something and now they have to try and escape from the carnival because they witnessed it like I like that movie I got this it's the Toby Hooper ordeal movie Ooh, ordeal movie I think that's what Eden Live feel, I is mean, sure, it's, like, like, it's people get themselves into a fucking it, situation sure. and it's an ordeal I, I, I like that yeah. like that's what it feels like they're just like they witness it now we're in an ordeal now we have to figure out how to get out of it and everything from that point feels like something that people would do like it feels like in the very heightened situation where you feel you're you find yourself trying to spend the night in a fun house and you witness a murder if you accept that, I I am very accepting of what these characters decide to do to try and get out of it, and what happened to what happens to them after that. Um, I had a really good time watching this movie. Um, I like the characters. I like what they try to do. I like the atmosphere of this movie. Um, I like how it. I, I had a really good time with this movie. I fucking recommend the Fun House. Like it was a good time. I was never bored. I love the atmosphere. I love what everybody did. Really enjoyed this movie. So uh, I recommend the hell out of it. Um, I'm fucking going to watch it again. I might buy this movie. This is good. Uh, Holly, what did you think about this movie? Um, well, we watched different movies. We tonight, did. We, we definitely did. Cause I fucking had a good time. Um, I think, I think in theory, this could have been a really great movie. I like the idea of it. I like the, the ambiance of the fun house. I think there was some really creepy imagery. Um, but it wasn't enough. I think this entire movie was just a missed opportunity. Uh, there wasn't there wasn't any gore. There wasn't there there wasn't really anything. You know, we've talked about like the the lack of a plot, the lack of a story. There was no real there was no real structure. I I didn't really know what we were watching. I was just waiting for this movie to start. Like the entire movie, I was kind of bored out of my mind. Um, there just, there just wasn't really anything there. There wasn't anything exciting. There's, 
I think one of our listeners said that there's nothing memorable about this. Mm, yeah, um, I had thoughts about this. I, I I agree. I don't think there's anything really memorable. I mean, yeah, the the monster, if you will, has has a decent design. I'll give you that. Um, and I don't even mind that it's like a rubber mask style because it it really is. And I thought it was kind of cool looking, but it wasn't. There, it wasn't given enough to really make an impact on anything. It wasn't like a scare. It wasn't a scary thing. Nothing about this movie was really scary. Nothing about it was. I mean, there might have been some at- some attempts at jump scares with with just being loud, but it still didn't even do that for me. Um, I just, I just don't, I, I don't see any appeal really. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't get anything out of this movie. No, I, I have to hard pass on the funhouse. Michaela. This movie is uh, meandering and pointless and has no <laughs> aim or goal. It, it It is such a waste, colossal waste of a cool premise. Like, this should be a straight up slasher in like the funhouse within a carnival even. It should be intruder in a carnival. It should be, it should make some sort of statement on something uh commit to something if you told me they showed up the day of and like had no script and just made it up as they went along it it would 100 percent make sense because this movie Mm -hmm. doesn't know what the fuck it's doing from scene to scene and it takes i felt like i was just waiting forever for this movie to get started and then by the time it finally did start to make some forward momentum i couldn't be bothered to care at that point because it had been way too fucking long Mm -hmm. and i was just like you tell me toby hooper's doing a movie about like a carnival in a fun house and Th- this is what I get. Yeah. Like there, it, it's there's no gore. That's why I was like, this movie. Like if I mean, I know the nudity puts it up to like an R, but like without the nudity, this is like a G-rated movie. There's like hardly any blood in this movie at all. People get like Scooby Doo murdered in this. Like the g- the guy that got the like a- the hatchet in the head or whatever. Are you fucking kidding me? Like this, there are episodes of Scooby Doo that have more suspense and gore and violence in this movie, and like it's. I don't. What, what was the point of this movie? What were they trying to do? Because I don't. I don't get it, and it just yes. it doesn't work for me. I'm really starting to like the Toby Hooper math is not checking out. I really don't think he's a good director at this point anymore. Like the last couple things I've watched by him have just been bad and just felt like I said unpolished and amateur level. Like this. This feels like a a first time movie maker or like a student film or something. It feels really like they don't. They are either inexperienced or they don't care. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not, I don't think it's well crafted at all. And I'm just like, I just don't get it. I don't get like what was su- this movie was supposed to be. Mm-mm. So I got a hard pass on that. Colin. Right, you have to promise me that you're going to see Salem's lot. Yeah, I, I'm down for it. I've heard good I'm, things yeah. about that. I'm down that for it. A, a I'm polished, absolutely willing to watch yeah, Salem's Lot. Yeah. Toby yeah, Hooper same. experience. Yeah. And I'm willing to watch Eaten Alive, too, for sure. I want to so, check that one out just yeah. to see. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know what I expect from that. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, when I first saw this movie, I, I was a lot younger, and it was during, you know, checking out slasher movies. I'm like, well, this isn't a slasher movie, and so I didn't like it. Then I checked it out a couple years later and uh, watched it, and it just kind of, like, evaporated from my mind. I was like, there's not really much here, and it just kind of went away. And then I saw it again. So this is one of these movies that I love now because I had to keep coming back to it. Why I kept it, I don't know. But I guess, yeah. Each time I recognize that the reason that I didn't like it was because of what I expected it to be. And maybe that's what happens when you see a movie, you know, you go in based on something is telling you, like, you know, it's a Toby Hooper movie. He made the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is going to be something like that, but in a fun house. Um, I mean, as I was kind of breaking it down and I've seen the movie enough times to, to, to realize, I think that there are like at least these three different uh pods right story pods in the movie uh i mean i like the first one kind of on its own then the second one is like the fun house hang or sorry the uh, the carnival hangout movie the atmosphere and the little character shit and the, just the stuff going on like interested the hell out of me mm. and i'm like this is all you know interesting kind of stuff but it isn't installing a dramatic engine mm. you know until the murder, which is probably, I mean, realistically, it's at least 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes into the movie before it is kind of like, all right, here, now we've established an antagonist and these kids are going to have to escape for their, you know, then begins the ordeal, right? 
of, uh, you know, they're going to have to go through this horror. And I think it's one of those things, too, like, you know, now we've seen horrors blown up and overplayed, overplayed, inflated to the point where the idea of, uh, you know, being in a tight, confined space with the lights off and your fr- something horrible happens to your friend, I think in their minds, Toby Hooper's mind, 1981, that's shocking and horrible enough. Now we go like, well, we need more, you know, sauce on this, you know, in order to make it uh, stand out. So I get it. So I I get that there's probably a lot of you out there who will be like, you know, if I recommend this movie, you're going to watch it and go like, well, you know, it really didn't deliver on these things. It has this atmosphere and these little character bits that I think are the reason that I really like this movie. And yeah, it's got a monster in it, which I really kind of like. I like Gunther and his whole mm. shtick. It's true. The movie, I mean, you could look at this as like, well, it's a bad movie, maybe, because uh, because it's unfocused, which I, th- I think for sure it is. And I think that Toby Hooper is a uh, uh, filmmaker who, you know, got lucky uh, for nothing, you know. He got lucky, I think, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Extremely lucky. Mm. Like, hit the fucking, you know, lotto numbers and boom. And that made him a career. The guy who made Salem's Lot is a guy who can make a movie. You know, when you watch that movie, you're like, okay, right? I mean, that's how you do it. And the guy who made Poltergeist Mm. can also (laughs) make a movie. (laughs) But let's assume, all right? I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. So Toby Hooper made that movie. He that's did. a fucking that's good a movie. movie. Yeah, it's yeah. a great movie. You know, and if that's his, then, you know, uh, I mean, and again, I like Life Force, but I get it. it's It's all over it's, the place kind of movie. Yep. But then Invaders from Mars is like incompetent. And some of the other stuff I've seen from him is just kind of like it has no passion or no interest. And in, it's just kind of there. But you know, he's probably living off that sweet poltergeist and uh, and uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw money. Well, there was no money in Texas Chainsaw. No, That's right. No the mafia money. took all yeah, that. The, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, as a ki- obviously, the Funhouse is not as uh, a prime Toby Hooper joint. But I do like it better than a lot of Toby Hooper movies, and I like it better than a lot of 80s, uh, um, you know, this era's slasher movies, believe it or not, because I think of the atmosphere, the performances, and, uh, you know, the creature is a thing. Um, I don't I would recommend The Fun House. I think you should at least check it out, try it, and see if it's, uh, if it's your jam. The Fun House. On there Saturday, I'm pretty sure. There you go. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Sean, what's your spooky season pick? It's Halloween. It is Halloween. It is Halloween. Halloween. What is Halloween without picking a Halloween movie? Oh, oh boy. God. Oh, no. So next week, we're going to be watching Halloween 2, the TV cut. Ah. Uh. What? Yep. This like violates so many fucking rules. So sorry, of this Colin. goddamn show. <laughs> Don't care. All right, we're watching Vito. Halloween Vito. two. Can we TV coat? Can, can we really talk about Halloween anymore? <laughs> and, uh, My Sean God. is on like a thing where we have to watch every fucking movie oh. in the goddamn Halloween movie in the series every year. Don't I was sweating because oh. I thought it was gonna be Halloween six, so I'm just glad that we already did Halloween. Oh, okay. Six. Oh, yeah. I dodged a bullet. It then, was so. close to being Halloween five. I mean, Halloween Five at least is a theatrical yeah. film, and yeah. not the TV cut of Halloween Two. Yep. If you watch Halloween Two, you got to watch Halloween Two. Halloween we'll, Two, the TV, and cut. we'll get into that next week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dumbest fucking thing that's ever happened on this show. <laughs> Sorry, Colin. That's what we're watching. All right then. Next week, uh, we're watching Halloween Two, the the TV cut. Halloween Two. Colin you can at least may not come back. Wait till next week to bash it. It would be the first time ever. If I could drive Colin away from this uh, uh, podcast, it would be an achievement. <laughs> oh, my God. It could happen. So that's, uh, yep. It's a freak show in the basement. <laughs> you broke him. You broke Colin. Yeah. Oh, good. And we're out. <laughs>